Very nice point. No worries. I was just asking from my Chachi Didi how it can help me in this debate. Okay. It says, Hi Dara, I can provide you with information. Well, this debate is one semi-formal education factor. Does this only require information? Or else, does my presentation skills, convincing skills, communication skills, Yeah. 
enhanced by past experiences and cognitive, environmental and emotional factors. So, you see, learning process, learning is a process and it is fast and it is complicated. So, I will conclude this as like this. The process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, attitudes and preferences. So, learning is not only concentrated to formal education where we see nurseries, schools and the tertiary education. It is all about semi-formal semi education and informal education too. So, moving on to educational outcome. If the learning process is fast, so does the educational outcomes. The observable results or achievements of an of an education or learning process. These outcomes can include knowledge, skills, attitudes and values that a person acquires through their educational experiences. It never says that these are the educational outcomes but it says it can include these as educational outcomes. This differs from education form to form. This differs from school to school, faculty to faculty, university to university. So we are taking three approaches which are we call the sociological approach for educational outcomes, the sociological approach of educational outcomes, and the psychological and physiological approach to educational outcomes, and the theosophical approach to educational outcomes. So when it comes to hindering, hindering means limiting abilities of someone to do something or to achieve something. So my speakers will say how the society uh, the, the, the ability of students being a social being is hindered by generative AI. The mental capacity and the physical capacities of students being hindered by generative AI.
judges. So next, we have our opposition speaker to Amali. Amali, are you ready?
Carlito Notionary Reset. There are hundreds of artificial intelligence software already adapted to education that are already currently in use. For example, the University of London already has a teaching assistant to help its lectures. Given that our lives are already increasingly powered by AI, then it is only natural that we accept it within our educational system. I have two observations I want to make before you move to my responses. First, we think there has been a large amount of time telling us that the outcomes of education are supposed to be social, supposed to be based on human interaction. We think this is largely tertiary to your base objective of education, which is to get the professional skills in order for you to get a job and survive in this increasingly difficult economy. We are still very happy to win on the grounds for social, cultural, and human interaction basis because we still think we can have better in our work we have generated there. Second observation I want to make is that they have zero response to Hollywood's argumentation about retention and understanding, which is better when you are generating AI. And secondly, zero response to Wikipedia's arguments about the application and communication getting better when you are generating AI. They need to make those responses they want in this case. Two things I want to respond to. Firstly, on human interaction. This is the all of their case when they tell us that there is a social cultural objective of education. We need to get them to be able to communicate and get things like presentation skills. I have three responses. First, you are still going to interact with your peers and teachers just because you get AI doesn't so mean you stay at home and study the only that. Because even after we had COVID and we had remote learning, we still came back to school and physical learning. The only difference is we took the advantage of remote learning back to the study, adapted to online systems. Secondly, there's still going to be, and more on our side, communal interaction with other people within your classroom. Like, for example, you can have group based activities and group based interactions within the artificial intelligence. You can have oral presentations at class, and you can do that a far, far better on our side. You actually have the time to do that. You have the time to do that because, as Bukri told you, at home, you can learn the syllabus and learn the memorization and the theory. So, the, you see, AI can give you instant feedback on because you have access to it at home, but at school, you can focus on interaction. Why do you just want to that teachers just have now more room, more time for social and emotional connection and they have to focus less on the inner task because the AI can do that for them? Second and response I want to make is about critical thinking. They seem to take a critical thinking to us. I don't know how this is any different by teachers right now because teachers right now teach, the, teach students, they give them the information according to their logic. Now students will now seem to not be able to think about themselves because they get that information anyway. So I guess I will make three responses here again. First, you have regulated educational models which are adapted for learning. They don't get the information to you straight. straight. They get guide you towards getting correct solutions and they give you feedback based on the answers that you give. Second, it's going to be regulated by teachers. And we think the teachers are capable of making sure that students don't overuse it to the point where they lose critical thinking and they can get the training on how to use AI effectively only on our side. Thirdly and finally, we think we can get more critical thinking because the arguments that Harry has already told you, the fact that you get more retention and more understanding. And in order to understand the content far, far better. What is my argument? My argument is going to be on how we allow teachers and researchers to do their job more effectively. First, on teachers, we think researchers can now analyze more large amounts of data far, far more efficiently through the use of AI. And this is how we come up with studies anyway. They look at large amounts of data, they find the gaps within existing studies and they fill those gaps by doing research. And this is the perfect AI to do this, right? And they can also generate outputs based on that uh, information and those studies in order to get a better understanding of the uh, information that they do research on. All these things that we can higher quality studies, which trickles down to the students, and students, students get better quality information. But secondly, teachers are far, far more efficient on us. Why is that the case? Because they now can save the time that they would otherwise spend on media tasks, things like marking reports and things like uh, making simple exercises for students, but the AI can do that for them. Rather, but they can use the AI both to generate study plans so in order for them to efficiently make their students work. They can spend less time on those media tasks and more time on focus, focusing on complex problems that they have they cannot do. Or things like creative, things like empathy, things like social interactions, all the things that they can are the most important. Our teachers now have more time to include AI. Yeah, we are very proud to propose.
We miss the house. I'm a student at UCSC. We have really great lectures, but I still turn to LLMs and the generative AI to supplement my education. Now just me. Think of people in other places where they don't have access to this kind of lectures, this kind of teachers. Think of people even in rural areas that cuts deep into their case where they have to teach us of making education inaccessible. We think that it's much more accessible for people to just have a mobile phone. You can the server the LLM with our G C R servers. People just need to have to access that. We think that education can be fast and supplemented. We think that students can help with all their doubts. I want to think of AI as a personal tutor, a personal teacher that you can afford to have for free in your hand. That is the debate that we are going to be talking about in depth today. I want to say that Charlie has come to the majority of the arguments that are motion out this idea about education outcomes. However, they never dignify our country, all of the country, with any response. The only response they came up with was no, no, no. We tell you, if you really want a better response, you can talk this speech in that GPA and probably get better responses from that. So moving on into our main response. Respond to this idea regarding basic students. First, we think it's unfair because there's a minority minority of examples. For example, considering all the other benefits you can get, can compare with equitable and equitable education. But even in this situation, we tell you this is going to be the deal. Why? There are better teaching mechanisms nowadays. That's why right. even when we have to take a set of papers, it's not turning it. Turning it as ages. There's plenty of other places that come with this kind of mechanisms. Moving on, they are talking the same exact same thing that people said in Google is they are scared of blogs. That then people were like, okay, Google knows the answer to everything. How are you going to learn? We see that AI is simply an extension of that. AI is a new technology that you have to accept, or you otherwise you are going to fall back behind in progress. We think that even if this example they have done, they are saying, and we think that the new lectures themselves they adapt, they change. For example, our lectures before they used to be essays, but after they used to be data, they used to be so I said we have to take home and do and try to submit to the whole set of things. So not things you can seem to cheat using it. Yes? You have to try to show all the set of things. This is how you create fifty learning. You can also get help from the other kind of generic AI that you have at the end of the day. But also in the very first scenario, you will cheat in terms of anything. Even on this scenario, the people who really really want to cheat a minority of them still outsource their assignments. They pay other people to do their assignments. They copy from their list. All of those things happen on their level and instead, that's what sometimes what you use to do first. We think it's unfair for you to waste the entire day. The next thing we tell us is this idea about psychological aspect. Learning needs to be psychosocial, psychological, physiological. I don't know what kind of utopia they are living in, but in the countries you look around, you go to government schools, government universities, you don't really get all these aspects in these places. And the best, you go there to get education. People go there because the economy, you won't get education. Parents send their children to school, to university, not for them to learn how to get to sit and all of those things, but to gain a minimum skill that you want to get a job. Sure, the other things are also beneficial, but how do you all those things still happen? You can still have group projects in universities, in classes. Those things are not going to be taken away just because you have it and because you have genetic AI. Yeah, we think that they fail to prove on their scenario as well. Last thing I want this to do, they're telling that children again are not about their information. They're listening to the great point of looking at very small children, meaning that most people also know how to understand not to do that again. But even in a situation, there are plenty of examples around open AI, open AI, so that, like, for example, it uses structure learning process, they can't do all of that. And then you are just pointing to like our other majority of examples, they really see all of those things that cater specifically like more advanced than their levels of relations. But I would argue that teachers themselves are pretty much the exact same thing that they do. If the children only know how to get information, aren't teachers doing the exact same thing? In that situation, we can argue that these relatives are at least, at least no worse than teachers themselves in this people who say education. Or even another thing, I would say, some kind of tuition teachers. But why do you think it's better than our life? They tell us about data or any high school, how you can have this system of autonomy now with them. We tell you, those are things you can still have on the side of the house. A place where people are more comfortable, more people can access education. That is why we think that generally we are something that we should focus.
seven, three, two, one. Dear ladies and gentlemen, picking apart the model proposed by Sir Proposition is pretty easy. Then we remind ourselves that our day is only 24 hours long. In their model, the students are expected to go to school and uh, do presentations in the day, and they come back from school, go home, and then consult AI models to get the subject orientation, right? Subject education, right? We don't believe that. We believe that all the way and no play makes chapter target. So in their in their model, they are they are just producing mechanized people who don't have any social interactions, who don't have any skills, uh, increase skills that would increase their effectivity in the workplace, right? And you small example. You see, you go to a doctor, you go to an optometrist, and then you ask, then you say, you know what, my eye is uh, hurting a bit and it's a bit swollen. And then the doctor looking at you, the best doctor possible, training not yet, looking at you will diagnose you on the spot and say, this is what? Five seconds, diagnosis done, you're okay. But you feel fear. But in contrast, back doctor, another doctor might say, okay, okay, you have a problem, spend a couple of minutes with you, talking and explaining to you that this problem is not very serious. However, uh, these are the drugs that you can use, and then this will become better. What doctor is a better doctor? Is it doctor? What are doctor? In their in their model, what produces um, what is produced is the type one of a doctor, right? All these mechanized people who spend all 24 hours of the day on their uh, all 24 hours of the day in pursuit of knowledge, right? Because they themselves said that you know what? If only if uh, AI is used as a vehicle to get information, we will have enough time to do presentations. And they say, you know what? In school, we don't have to do presentations because we are too busy learning. Sorry, we are too busy imparting uh, information in a very regularized manner, right? However, group presentations and oral skills is not the only thing that's going to teach you how to present yourself, right? When you sit in a classroom, you know each and every person has a different personality, and you know each and every person has to be handled differently if you want to uh, interact with them properly and have a proper uh, experience, right? So these are little things which we, we only learn if you spend time with other people, not in isolation, right? In our model, people spend time with people. They don't spend time with machines, right? They came up saying Google, uh, Google, this is AI is just an extension of Google, no? Google replaced the right way, but AI is here replacing the teachers and the teaching experience, the ladies and gentlemen, and the learning experience. This is why we believe that a proper, a properly uh, socialized uh, environment as the status quo is right now is a better and will produce better professionals and better people for the future, right? And uh, moving on to my second argument. They went on and said, well, uh, low IQ people will be in the United so uh, they will have a lot of problems with um, psychological issues, right? But we say, 34%, only 34% of children below the age of 14 in Sri Lanka have access to an internet. Only 34% of the children in Sri Lanka will have access to all these AI users they are talking so highly of. Okay? So what about the rest of the 66%? What about the middle? They, they will fall behind and they will have the effects. They will also see the people who have no money than them as the same age as them go to the highest of highs while they are stuck in a situation created by, or sorry, person by AI. This was spoken by our second speaker who said that AI creates the divide and magnifies the digital divide. With that, I ask you to decide the side of the
sum of speech. So Udara from the opposition will give the sum of speech. Udara are you ready?
Thank you, Dara. Uh, let's give some time for the judges to mark their balance. Ladies and gentlemen, food and AI. So, audience, do you all also watch dog videos? Let's give some time uh, for the judges. Thank you, judges. Uh, so next we have our last sum of speech uh, by Chandra Chandraveli. And Google and digital calculators and all of that came up. Everyone thought we meant to be room and we would be completely dependent upon it. That did not happen. Rather, you know, using that day to day interactions and it will better the society in every way possible. Three observations I want to make before I move into the flashes. First, there is massive lack of analysis coming from their speeches. They cannot give you assertions without telling you the reasons as to why they are true. And furthermore, there is any analysis that came from the speeches, it is either in their own speech, which is unclear, if you do not have speech in one way, or it is in their reply speech, and they don't need to bring up new material in their reply or sum up speeches. The second observation I want to make is that we talk about the Harini speech itself or the issues or no personalization or the bad student-teacher ratios or the focus on memorization and we want to focus on critical thinking. I don't know how opposition solves any of these issues because they don't talk about it at all. At least we do something when we include generating AI. Third and final observation is that all the arguments are contagion but AI has suddenly been introduced in the current educational system. But that does not take into consideration any of the systematic change that we've been talking about from Hollywood speech onwards. The fact that there is going to be a gradual system change where the AI models get better, where assignments adapt to more oral and creative thinking uh, methods, where there's no replacement of teachers as they train, but rather collaboration between teachers and the AI to give any, uh, students the best possible education. Three clashes within this uh, debate. Firstly, on who personalizes education better. We told you that we increased retention because we have active learning, we have instant feedback because we gain by and make it fun and engaging and because we teach it different mediums like audio and visual and all of that can be generated through AI. Also told you that uh, understanding is better because you can adapt to different levels of competency based on how good the student is. The only response that we hear is that no, the device says is the thing that has retention, the student doesn't. They don't give us any reason as to why this is so. I can assert that no, the teacher is the person who has all the retention, it is not the student. But the problem is that we need to analyze how you gain power. You can use generating AI to make it engage. You can make it, you can make learning a form that is very enjoyable to students, which increases things like retention. Next question about application and communication. Uh, we are good. Or you can diversify the forms of education because you can learn the syllabus and memorize at home, but you can do all the creative things, all the human interaction that they value so much at the class, and you now have the time to do that far far better. So you can have these like, debates and whatnot at your classes themselves. You can also take a more enjoyable uh, approach and do various things with the different media to generate what AI, AI loves. The only thing that we hear in response is that, oh, we need to take a social approach. Sure that human interaction takes place and that the student's role is um, is our presentation skills and communication. We gave you multiple levels of response. We 
told you, there is far more material in our because now you are trying to present, you are trying to do those oral signs and classes, so you are generating air, it is instantly in your students when they are in their homes. But he also told you that you can do all the sorts of creative thinking and more interactions, more human interactions far far better when teachers have the time to actually take care of you with that. Because now they are not focused on these tasks of like marking reports and whatever, but rather they use the generative AI to solve that and then focus more on the students' learning. So sociologically, which is their biggest push, we still win this debate. The final clash I want to talk about, actually before that, let's talk about critical thinking. Let's talk about this whole lazy student and how this lazy student is now going to get disadvantaged because he's going to use the AI to generate all of his assignments. Firstly, you can't make this argument that first is pointing to our argumentation and how we better critical thinking to things and better retention to through things get better understanding which we argue throughout our speeches. But secondly, they don't give you the responses that we give you in regards to critical thinking being harm. The fact that you can regulate in many different ways. You can regulate from the AI models themselves. It's like hard ego things like a uh, notion are specifically specialized for education. That means they don't feed the students the information. You make sure that they're guided through an interactive process where students retain as much as possible. But secondly, worst case, teachers can simply make sure the students are not overusing it and not overly dependent on the air. It's a response that you're making throughout the lecture. Final dash is about accessibility. We told you how it's just all you need is a phone and an internet connection, and the other you can make it much more accessible than uh, the status quo is right now. The only response that we hear to this is from four speech and some of it, which is very under because you don't get a chance to respond to it. But either way, we think that material is already been dealt with. Because having just told you from his speech onwards, it's not a sudden integration of AI, it's a gradual approach where he has maybe at the start it's only uh, introduced to developing areas, but gradually rural areas start to get access to phones, rural areas start start getting access to AI, the government is a better incentive to invest in that once you start introducing AI to educational systems. And I want to know that as Vinay pointed out, they don't get to claim the, the, the equal education on their side because teachers themselves are not sufficiently productive, not sufficiently supplied within rural areas. So that problem of equal education still exists in the world, our AI systems are far more better because they are more accessible. Final in conclusion, I just want to weigh up. The biggest harm that they can claim is that a minority of lazy students are somehow going to get through all the checks that our teachers and our models are going to put out and use AI to submit and make their assessment. Compare that out to all the benefits that we get to so the millions of people who now retain their education, get more personal education, get more accessibility to education. We have never been prouder to propose. Gracias. 